Hello everyone and welcome back to our month long emergency series day 31 of 31, the last one. So hopefully you were able to take something from all these videos and you could find something useful. So I appreciate everyone who took the time to watch some or all of these videos. So let me know if anyone is 31 for 31 and has seen them all, congratulations. So today we are talking about brake failure on landing. Now this one doesn't have to be an emergency. So how would you know if you have a brake failure? Well, sometimes after liftoff, you might tap the brakes a little bit. Now this might be a more common practice on retractable gear aircraft. But in doing so, let's say there's no resistance there, mushy and kind of just go to the floor. Or maybe one only one goes to the floor, right? Or maybe you don't find out that way. Maybe you touch down and then as you go to apply the brakes, right, they go to the floor. So now what? Do you just continue and let it roll? Or do you perform a go around? Or would this technically be called a touch and go? So there are a few different scenarios here I think that are worth talking about. Well, if you know in advance that you have no brakes, you would wanna look for a long wide runway, of course. Now how long is long enough for your airplane? So actually, this is something that you could test sometime, right? Pick a runway at an uncontrolled field where they aren't busy and just land the aircraft and don't touch the brakes, right? Let it roll and just see how much runway you need for your specific aircraft, right? That might be good information to have at some point. But let's say you don't know until you touch down. So after you touch down, you apply the brakes, you have no resistance. Do you roll out or do you go around? So I think it depends on the situation, right? If there's plenty of runway, you know, there's no issues just rolling out and then letting it go. But if your ability to stop in time before the end of the runway is in question, then it might be a good idea to go around, right? So going around gives you some options and it lets you set up for a more ideal landing, either here at this airport or maybe somewhere better. Okay, so let's say you go around, or you already know you have a brake failure and you will attempt to land. So what are some things to keep in mind? So first of all, you know, make sure you're at an appropriate airport with a long enough runway and wide enough. You know, Ideally, you have a long enough runway and you can just coast to a stop. That would be ideal. How much distance you need, like we talked about, depends on your aircraft. A few thousand feet should be adequate. So some things to think about as you touch down. So first, you'd wanna use the short field technique, right? So touch down as slow as practical, leaving less speed to then bleed off, right? So touch down as close to the end of the runway as possible to allow for maximum rollout distance. So you'd want full flaps, leave them in with full back pressure for maximum aerodynamic braking. Now ideally, again, you just let it roll and then that would be the safest. So if you needed to though, you could make some like shallow S turns as you roll out. So this effectively increases your landing rollout distance and would provide you some additional margin. But don't get too crazy here, right? The last thing you wanna do is lose control of the aircraft if you start doing S turns at a high speed, right? That's not a good idea. So another idea, if you still had one side available is to gently tap that brake and then while using rudder, then on the opposite side. So that should allow for some braking while maintaining some control down the runway. And then if you needed additional stopping power, you could open the doors and hold them open, right? A Cherokee, you got one door, you, you have the little window, you can stick your hand out, that wouldn't do anything. But Cessna, maybe you have two doors, I don't know. So that would be another idea possibly to do some, induce some drag. So how do we prevent this then? So I think, you know, proper maintenance and pre-flighting is generally always the best way to go. There's probably not too much else you can do to prevent a brake failure. It could sneak up on you. You could hit something on your takeoff roll, right? Which could damage something and cause a brake failure. So, you know, on your pre-flight, inspect the brakes, inspect the lines, and then before taxi, of course, you're checking the brakes on taxi. Do they feel solid? Do they feel mushy? Do they kind of go to the floor? So if they're mushy, then you might need to get them checked out. So the last thing I would say is to practice the no brake landing when you're just out flying and messing around. Sometimes you just go out with nothing particular in mind to do. It's something that you can do, right? Land, roll out, and see how much distance you need, right? That might come in handy at some point. So day 31, landing with no brakes. This doesn't have to be an emergency. Once again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. So I really appreciate, appreciate everyone who has taken time to watch this entire series. Hopefully you can take something from it which makes you a better pilot. And then lastly, I hope you don't need to put any of these into practice. So fly safe everyone, we'll see you around.